Um, so we want to figure out some processes for how we're going to uh, develop the next version of Pulp while we're continuing to add features to Pulp 3. Um, Pulp 3 has, is very different from Pulp 2 and its development has taken a really long time and our users are going to experience, you know, a, a huge change going from Pulp 2 to Pulp 3. I don't foresee us uh, having that much of a difference when we release Pulp 4. And I would like us to uh, make it as easy as possible for our users to do that. Um, which means that we will need to develop Pulp 4 in parallel with Pulp 3. As we're developing features uh, for Pulp 3, we we'll, might be working on some feature that's backwards and compatible with Pulp 3, but just not that different. Um, and so we need to establish some processes, some development processes that will allow us to do this development in parallel. Um, in the notes here, um, I put down a couple of ideas uh, that would possibly work. I think one of them is uh, worse than the other, um, but the idea is that, so I'm gonna go with, over idea A and then idea B. Um, the first idea is to just bump the version on the master branch to 4.0 dev and continue merging all the features to that branch. Pulp 3, and then, you know, whatever Pulp 4 feature comes in, merge it into there, and then um, do releases of Pulp 3 from a feature branch for that, um, and just cherry pick everything that's supposed to go into Pulp 3 still onto that branch and continue doing releases from that branch. And whenever we release a 3. Dot, you know, 8, 3.9, whatever it is, um, we will create a 3.10 branch right away. And that's where we will uh, start doing development for 3.10. Uh, this will require a whole lot of cherry picking. Um, the, and I don't know um, if we will actually like the history that gets created with all this. Um, the other option is to create a 4.0 branch that's going to be the feature branch for, for the 4.0 release and <clears throat> continue all our development uh, on master branch and cherry pick those changes. Well, not cherry pick, merge all those uh, changes from master into the 4.0 branch. And only uh, do uh, merges into the 4.0 branch, either from that master branch or a feature that's backwards and compatible and has to go into 4.0. And at some point we will probably reach, uh, and I don't know how long it would take, but where we can't merge um, master into 4.0. But I, foresee, I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. So those are two uh, solutions that I had in mind. So the, the issue I have with, with B, regardless of whatever else we, we talk about here is, mm -hmm. so that means that master is the three branch that we're, it's, if you're doing three work, you're merging, you're putting stuff into master. I'm working yep. on a feature that we know is not is backward incompatible. So I'm working in the four branch. I'm maybe it's called four dash master, let's say, mm -hmm. right? And eventually we decide we're going to release four now to the public. So the first thing is, but we still have three development that has to happen because it's out there in the wild. And we never, we know, we all know that you never just get to throw it away and stop working on it you're gonna keep fixing security bugs and major problems in three for a while. And you're working on four in the four master branch. 
and you're working on bug fixes for that because now it's out, does four become the master branch or are we now working on four master? And what happens in 18 months when we want to cut five? Is that the master branch? Once four is released, it becomes master. Right. So now you have to push it all. And that's where I'm, that's, I, I think I got to that point and I'm thinking the, the constant recycling back up can, um, is just an opportunity for, it's a fertile ground for lots of mistakes to be made. And I have seen projects, some of them here at Red Hat, some elsewhere, where their approach is master is actually not used that there's a three master. And if you're doing development for three, you're in three master. And there's a four master. And if you're doing development for four, you're in four master. And if you want to put something, fix a bug in three that you think applies to four, then you are responsible for doing that cherry pick. And then when five happens, it gets branched from four master, not from three. And so there's essentially this kind of uh, stair step branching process where you stop using master, and there's a three branch and then you stop using three there's a four branch where you're doing all your development and you stop using four there's a five branch where you're doing all of your development and then off of these main branches is where the the y branches happen so 3.10 is either just a tag on the three branch or it's possibly its own branch depending on how much support you have to do for back level stuff and it gets really interestingly complicated um and there's no way to solve that complication right it is the reality of where we live is we're going to have to support, I don't know, 3.15 and 16 and 4.1 and 4.2 while we're doing development on five. That is absolutely the reality of having a successful project. The only way for it to make to be clean is if nobody uses your your thing and you're the only one working on it and nobody wants that. So sorry, Ina, you were going to talk. Yeah, I wanted to say that before going down the rabbit hole in first place, I think we'll identify how many Y releases, um, major releases we're going to support because mm -hmm. uh, given the capacity, we won't be able to support three, four, five, and six. Right. So, so I, I also kind of wanted to bring up something. Um, one of the projects that I work on um, as a contributor is the DNF project. And DNF recently transitioned to a multi-versioned um, mainline branch project, <clears throat> but that transition is temporary. The whole point of doing that is because they're trapped into supporting DNF four for rel eight, and then they want to move to DNF five for rel nine. So one of the things I want to caution you about doing a multi-version master thing is that it confuses people on how they're supposed to submit changes. Um, it makes it very complicated to identify what you're supposed to do. Um, and on top of that, it's almost never worth it. If you are as a team going to decide that you are maintaining primarily the development for one version or another, that version tree should, that, that primarily, that primary feature development tree should be your mainline tree. Um, whether that is 3X or 4X or 6X or 99X doesn't really matter. Um, from the, the problem I tend to see from Pulp is that they're being tugged in three directions. They're trying to support the Pulp 2 stuff because the business has decided that they're not prioritizing porting everything to Pulp 3. And now the simultaneously, we've discovered that there are architectural things we want to change about Pulp again, that we cannot change in Pulp 3. So we must make it Pulp 4, not saying you're going to or whatever, but like this is sort of the discussion that's happening. And you don't know how to deal with that particular situation. The way that I honestly that I suggest that you guys do this is that as soon as you decide that you're queuing up architectural changes for a next major version of pulp, make master that version and then have a release branch where you maintain everything else because you are going to confuse people by having multiple quote unquote master or main or whatever branch you want to call it. And you're going to confuse people by saying you have parallel development branches, which is absolutely like not the way you're supposed to do this. If you're going to have parallel development branches, you might as well split the repo. Like that's much easier for everyone to grok. I pretty much agree completely with you, Neil. Um, when we go and begin even a single backwards incompatible change um, for which would become, you know, semantic versioning would require that to be pulp four. Uh, then that would be master, and there wouldn't be a second master. There would be release branches for the three dot wise 
that branch from there. And so in that case, uh, whenever you are doing feature development on the three lines still, and you want that feature to be available in both, does it land in the master branch and then you cherry pick it back? I would yeah. say yes, because the yeah. goal is to primarily push towards the next version. So you yes. started the next version, and then if it makes sense, cherry pick back. This also has an added benefit I don't know, <laughs> of, of making it so that there's always pressure to stop maintaining multiple development trees. Mm -hmm. So there's this pressure that as you make bigger and bigger changes and more and more significant changes, and it becomes harder and harder to pull them back into the older versions, it makes it easier to justify just straight up moving forward to the next version. Because the easier you make it to manage backporting major changes, to older versions, or you make it more required to, to for the contributors to submit to both branches or whatever you want to do for your strategy that isn't just make everybody go into the mainline branch and, and develop that forward, um, the less likely you're ever going to be able to pull off another major version transition because you just don't build up any benefits to doing it. Um, and also you're just you're just stretching yourselves too thin eventually. Like you guys are actually a fairly large team in the software management side compared to almost every other team at Red Hat that I've interfaced with. Like I think the only team as big as you guys is the is the DNF team. Every other team is essentially too starved to pull off these kinds of decisions. So you got to think from that perspective of do you think you can actually grow to essentially be this size for maintaining two parallel version trees? If the answer to that is no, don't do it. I mean, we already certainly have issues with having to support Pulp 2 stuff that's broken and Pulp 3. Um, and the difficulty is it's we don't we have stakeholders who are who are like, yeah, I know you want me to move to Pulp 4, but I'm not gonna because, as you say, Neil, there's me and one other guy and and we know we're going to have to do some work in our code to make that happen. And we're just not going to. And this this is a major security problem and you have to fix it. Or this is a performance problem or this is a user that we'd never heard of before. But boy, is he excited and we kind of have to fix this use case. Um, um, I really I, I really like the the concentration on it has to be easy for community members to contribute to pulp. And I really like the idea of of master is always your next thing, whatever that is. A what I'm hearing, Neil, is a it's a it's an important distinction, but a subtle one between what Dennis has written here in idea B, which is that first bullet create for from master. That doesn't happen until the instant you decide, OK, we're now going to cut four and start a release process. And at that point, master is now five. And yep, that's the, and that's the way that happens. Mm -hmm. um, and I like that. I think that that makes it easier. We're going to have to we we personally, as people who you know, get digital pieces of paper with with numbers on it every other week. Um, have to recognize that our personal reality is, regardless of how hard it is to support multiple versions, we are going to be supporting multiple versions. We have to figure out how to make that a little easier on us, but concentrating on how to make it easier for the community to contribute is definitely job one. And yep. contributing to master, which is the next thing, is just an extension of the uh, always upstream first. You're always contributing to the to the higher level one as a community contributor. And if we decide, we decide, oh, this would be great to have in three, then it, it becomes the team's release engineering process to figure out, okay, how can we get that fix into the appropriate place in three? And then if somebody says, yeah, we want you to put it in pulp two as well, then we all just quit and somebody else can do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> but, the, but, but a key thing that that you know that we've talked about, and I'm not sure it's in this document. A key thing we've talked about, though, is I can't get it in two because two is wildly different. We rewrote the whole thing to get rid of Mongo and and to to make it a lot more sane, very successfully. It should not be as much of a problem to get stuff that works in four into three, 
or even in five into three. I'd like to see a more evolutionary every 18 months instead of once every four years, there's a big bang where we replace everything. And poor Tanya and Daniel and Ina have to rewrite the migration plugin all over again. We really don't want to be there <laughs> if, we can if we can avoid it. I mean, I totally so, um, sympathize with that. I mean, if I had a prior pulp deployment, I'd be, I'd be really happy with, with that kind of sentiment too. Um, but I, I also want to caution you to think about when you're thinking about maintenance and such like that, you should always make sure there's a, a just a little bit of pressure, a little bit more than not than zero um, to, to just upgrade instead. And, and if you're considering this more evolutionary path rather than kind of like break the world kind of scenario, like we happened with pulp two and three, then then there should be a lot less pressure to maintain older versions. There should be a lot more pressure for them to just move up because it's a lot less breakage and it's a lot easier to churn to. And so like, if you're thinking about an evolutionary strategy for pulp versions going forward, then you should also consider that same evolutionary strategy as a way to prefer not maintaining so many older versions. Not saying you're gonna get away with it, but, but you know, and sometimes them's the breaks you have to i mean i'm I'm familiar with that as well i mean this is this is the way the cookie crumbles but try to make make your contribution and development processes optimized for moving forward rather than for the the current reality case which is you are maintaining multiple parallel versions and you don't really have a choice because it's basically a fake it until you make it scenario in every kind of development evolutionary process <laughs> So um, I, I also agree pretty much completely with Neil. Um, but there's also a, a pretty fundamental technical reality that we've discussed before, but we haven't discussed it yet, which is that the second we have a pulp four and we have a change that we want to make on pulp three that requires a migration, we can't. Too bad, so sad, you know, once, once we've, have users that have migrated their database with migrations on pulp four with changes that are not in pulp three we can't go back and apply any more migrations to pulp three it it's just not going to happen we can't you know, the problem that we're that we're addressing there daniel is that migrations the django migrations are often not item potent if you could apply the same migration twice then it would be less of a problem the other problem is that migrations are order dependent. Like if I have one migration that creates a table and then a new one six months later that adds a column to it, I can't choose the just add a column feature without having also added the, the creates the table in the first place feature in the right order. And it's, you're right, this is, and this is the problem we just ran into. We were discussing this what last week actually about how to deal with this just in the master versus um, release context where it's all three, it's all pulp three and individual cherry picking broke us. I don't have an answer to it, um, but that's the, the crux of the problem, yeah? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's the Django and, migration uh, machinery. Yeah, and if we're having that problem even in the span of six weeks for a release, you know, there's no way we're gonna be able to maintain that long term with pulp three versus pulp four, especially not versus pulp five. Um, is just, yeah. Well, good, that's good that you bring that up, but I don't see that solved either with idea A nor with idea B. That's right. It's, it is a problem. It's the migration issue of, yeah. of, I have a, I'm being selective about what I'm taking into one version. And then I want to upgrade to the next version where, where that already exists, but so does other stuff around it. And at that point, we're broken. And that's why, you know, Daniel starts off with the only guaranteed way that we have right now to make that happen is the instant you decide I'm going to pull a single thing out of the Pulp 4, say, the master branch, back into Pulp 3, then that Pulp 3 can probably never reliably be migrated forward to Pulp 4 because things are out of order unless you accept everything out of pulp four into pulp three, which is a possible thing. Um, but it is, it's a hard problem. I don't know how to solve this, but it's definitely uh, kind of the, the um, it's the, the rock, if you will, that, that we're gonna crash on until we figure out how to get around it. Yeah. Now, now granted, this does only apply to changes that require migrations. 
Um, but those are, you know, still, it still happens fairly that's regularly. That's still pretty common. The last time I looked through like stuff that's going through into it um, for, for pulp three. Um, but it, it sounds like one of the bigger problems is that your stakeholders and you are not aligned on the evolutionary strategy for pulp, like how they're going to be consumed and how they're going to be used and how they're going to be shipped. Um, and that is problematic for, and, and is probably like the underlying source of this whole question of how are we going to handle releases is that you can't get your stakeholders and yourself together to align on how this should be evolving. Um, I think getting an answer to that question first is going to be required before we can figure out any details for the rest of it. Because until you get the satellite team on board with whatever you want to do, I don't know how you're going to do anything. Um, like, I'm speaking as someone who just wants to use Pulp, like, the way you guys develop is kind of hard for me to keep track of everything. And, like, I don't know if I can trust releases to work because I can't follow them linearly in a relatively sane way. But, but at the same time, you have this complexity where the satellite team is not taking your releases as soon as you're making them and essentially pushing them forward. So I don't know what to, I don't know what you can do here, but I think what you're going to have to do is, is, figure out what the satellite team wants from you and, and align that to what, what the pulp team wants to move forward on. And the fun thing is we have, we actually have multiple stakeholders. I mean, satellites and Catello are the ones everybody knows about because they're very public. We, there's a number of products and projects that rely on pulp that aren't the satellite team, aren't the Catello team, and they have their own, their own ideas for, how often they can upgrade and how important various things are. Uh, so one of the comments that that we hear regularly in in just talking to each other and banging our heads on our tubes is how to meet all of these often incompatible conflicting requirements from multiple stakeholders. Um, my observation over the last year is we do as well at that as I've seen a project do but it's definitely something that doesn't mean we're doing it well. It just means we're not completely uh, imploding over the over the requirements yet. <laughs> so the concern that Daniel brings up, I think, is um, a very serious one mm -hmm. um, with the migrations, and I think that it is worth um, exploring more. Um, because it doesn't matter what strategy we pick for uh, our branching if we can't figure out how to uh, deal with migrations uh, mm -hmm. all of this will be moved so um on the migrations point i had imagined regardless of how the branching is done I'd imagine that the three line will continue to receive migrations and uh, the four line would be in development as master and would receive a new and different migrations and the set of migrations from three would be applied all in all of them. And then when you go to upgrade to four, which is a one way event, the first migration from migration four would be the first one run after the last migration of three and it would iterate forward through all of them so i mean during the development of pulp four that's fine we can keep rebasing the migrations um in pulp four to like keep it updated yeah. but once but once we release pulp four and it actually gets installed and and the user upgrades to it then then those migrations are now frozen. And we I agree. I agree. Um, and this is the motivation to upgrade a four. <laughs> um, yeah, what I hear is that the bug fix must not contain a migration. And that's going to be, well, it's hopefully that will get easier as we we find the major problems 
we have had bug fixes recently where the fix is, oh shit, that has to be unique, hmm. for example. Um, again, he says, hoping with all of his fingers crossed that that is less often, but I guarantee you it's going to happen occasionally. It's really difficult to, to say that as an overarching thing because we all know how software works. Yeah, and so in Pulp 2, in order to deal with um, the Catello, you know, pulp that's in Catello and stuff is we would renumber migrations sometimes. Um, and that's right. <laughs> we, uh, I think, want to avoid uh, getting into a situation where we do that between, you know, pulp four and pulp three. Definitely, it's a difficult problem. Um, the lack of item potency makes it harder, but even once you make them item potent, you still have an ordering issue, and I don't know how to solve both of them yet. Yep. Um, general uh, migrations come with dependencies. Exactly. Yeah, there are... and, you can't, and you can't skip them is the thing. I believe you can. Yeah, so um, I th if I'm hearing this right, I think that what we've established is that we know how to safely develop Pulp 4 with regards to migrations, and we do not know how safely to release Pulp 4 um, while continuing to release older versions of Pulp 3. And so from, for what I was hoping for from the session, that actually checks my box pretty well because... Um, we, I think we have time to figure out that second part more than we would need, like, just because we can't figure it out here, right here in this meeting, like we need to look at more details about the general migration system and how it works and how other projects co-ship to mainlines. Um, but I think that what I'm understanding is that we absolutely could call master pulp four. And if we did, we could continue sh creating new migrations for pulp three and creating and, mi and rebasing migrations for Pulp 4. And it sounds like everything would be fine. Yeah, the challenge is only after Pulp 4 is released. I agree. Or, or just before <laughs> the act of releasing it and getting the mic. But yes, you're right. So if, if we just decided right now that master is Pulp 4, one of, we, we would need to clean up. We would need to have a an appropriate three release branch for the for folk that are using it, but maybe not. I'm designing off the top of my head. My apologies. Mm -hmm. We need, might need to clean up what we, we have right now. Maybe not. But basically, we could say right now today, everything in master is heading for pulp four. And if next week we decide, here's a thing that needs to happen next year because of stakeholders or Robin comes and tells us or whatever, and it's going to be incompatible, it needs to break the API. At that point, we need to make sure that we have the machinery in place for people that are using three to be able to keep doing their thing. But we're now working on Pulp 4, and we start down this path. And then uh, nine months from now, when it's like, all right, now we're going to release Pulp 4, then hopefully we'll have solved the migration problem between now and then. Yeah, so I think the, yeah, the, bran the branching problem, I think, is uh, clear. Um. And I feel like I that part I'm satisfied with, and um, that's really what this session uh, was meant to cover. So who's ready to start working on four? <laughs> um, cool. I think, Mat I think Matthias is changing the entire locking structure like next Tuesday, so. He's probably the good candidate. Well, yeah, and it's the discussions like that that uh, cause me to want to have a session like this. Because Changing that might make to rebase uh, migrations very hard. Yep, and that's where that's where that's really where the 
that's where the collision is going to happen. And there's going to be blood and guts and gore and steel all over the road. I'm not sure how to avoid that. The fact that we're aware of it now instead of the Tuesday before release is good. Um, so we can kind of keep it in mind because I, I certainly do not have a solution for that. Um, OK, OK, I'm just I'm throwing notes in here, by the way, if I'm if I've misstated anybody's case, please hit up the doc and change it or hit me up. I will change things. Cool. I'm going to stop recording at this time uh, unless we want to continue this discussion. I mean, hell, I, I, we can continue this discussion forever. What else do we want to do? We want to get out of this in terms of future of, um, you know, folk that weren't able to be here is, is the only question. All right, on that note, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs> Interesting.